Hello, welcome to the BMC Learning Series. Today we'll be covering Main View Basics Part 1. We'll begin the session with a brief overview of the Main View architecture. Next, we'll spend some time talking about the navigation within Main View. Then we'll cover the customization of Main View displays. This has been broken out into two sections screen customization and view customization. Finally, we'll close our session with a quick review of key points covered in the material. Note that there are a couple of brief quizzes throughout. Just use pause to take your time to consider the questions before the answers are displayed. So what is MainView and what does it do? MainView provides a holistic, integrated solution for mainframe management, including monitoring and automation products. In addition to the operating system itself, MainView solutions are available for many ZOS subsystems, including DB2, IMS, Kix, MQ, IP, USS, and most recently, JVMs. The MainView architecture is both flexible and extensible. MainView consists of three primary types of address spaces. The Product Address Space, or PaaS, the Coordinating Address Space, or CAS, and the User Address Space, UAS. This design provides abstraction of the data collection and management from the end user session, giving us efficiency and flexibility. There are other address spaces as well, such as the UIM, used by Threshold Advisor, and the DBC, used by MainView Infrastructure, MainView for DB2, MainView for Java Environments, and MainView for MQ. Central to the MainView architecture is the Coordinating Address Space, or CAS. The CAS executes as a subsystem, and there's one CAS per LPAR. The CAS provides many capabilities of the main view architecture, including managing the movement of data between the user session and the data management address spaces. The CAS also manages the connections with other CASs to support the single system image, or SSI. The CAS hosts the Plex Manager component of main view. The Plex Manager provides capabilities for defining custom contexts, exception management, and security. The Product Address Space, or PaaS, executes as a started task and provides the data management functions of the MainView architecture. There are typically more than one PaaS per LPAR, depending on the MainView solution mix. The PaaS collects data, then stores it in history files at defined intervals. The CAS can request a mix of current and historical data as a result of this data structure. Some MainView solutions share a PaaS, while others require their own PaaS, notably CF Monitor, MainView for ZOS, and MainView for Unix system services, all run in the same PaaS. It's also possible to execute the Kix, MQ, IMS, DB2 monitors, and auto operator in the same PaaS as well. The user address space, or UAS, represents the user session within the main view architecture. The UAS connects to the CAS to gather data from the product address spaces. The UAS can be a TSO, VTAM, EXCP, or Explorer server address space. If you're accessing main view through the main view explorer, the same security calls are made to your ESM, that is RACF, ACF2, top secret, as if you were in a 3270 session. A TSO ID and password for the system hosting the Main View Explorer started task are required to access Main View Explorer. Your site may have additional controls for applications and URLs. This slide illustrates how the CAS, PAS, and UAS fit together. The CASs are linked between systems most frequently via a cross-system coupling facility, or XCF although TCP IP and VTAM connections are also supported for connecting CASs where there is no XCF available, such as between SysPlexes. The PAS connects to the local CAS on the LPAR, as do the UAS sessions. The design dictates that the user session issues the requests for data to the CAS. The CAS interprets the request, identifies the type of data and the target PAS that has the data, then requests the data from the PASs. When the data is returned from the PAS, it is passed to the user session for formatting and display. 
The next generation logger runs within the DBC address space and manages logging and retrieval functions for select main view components, such as the main view infrastructure, main view for DB2, main view for MQ, main view for Java environments, and the main view transaction analyzer. NGL provides a highly efficient mechanism for logging high volumes of data. NGL and the DBC are used by both MainView and DB2 solutions from BMC Software. OK, a quick quiz on what we've covered so far. Pause here until you've answered. When we refer to a screen in MainView, we're referring to the entire MainView display. You can use screens to display all available screens. You can then select a screen from the resulting view by placing your cursor on the screen you wish to display and then pressing Enter. If you know the name of the screen you wish to display, you can use the SCR command, such as SCR My Screen, to display My Screen. Save SCR saves the current screen definition. You'll be prompted for a screen name when you save the screen definition. Screens are a useful way of organizing main view displays or views. Screens can contain data from any combination of main view monitors. The next concept is that of windows. In main view, a window is a subset of a screen and controls the target and time context to determine, in conjunction with the view definition, which data records are needed for the view. A window consists of zero or one views. To issue a command against a particular window, you can prefix Windows commands with WN to direct Windows commands. You can also update the cur win field to direct actions to a particular window. The alt win field can be used to direct the output of actions in one window to another. Alt win indicates the target window of the action. Prefacing the alt win number with an ampersand causes the value to be retained until explicitly removed from the alt win field. The window information line provides a lot of good information about the window. I'd like to take a minute to identify these fields for you. The first value is the window status and number. The first character indicates if there is more data to the left or right in the view. The second character, typically W, is the status of the window and stands for waiting for input. The third character is the actual window number. This number can be used to prefix commands. The next field is the name of the view. This defines what and how data is displayed. The next field is context. Context indicates which targets are eligible to provide data to the display or view. The next fields are the date and time of the data in the window. If you are viewing historical data, this will differ, differ from actual system date and time. The next field is the main view product you are currently using. The next field will be either a D or a U, indicating whether the view is as distributed or modified by the user. And the last field indicates how many rows of data were returned in the query. A view is the formatted data within a window. A view consists of a form to determine the formatting of the data to be displayed. It also consists of a query that indicates which data records are needed. The window context determines which paths will provide the data and for what targets. You can use the views command to display all available views. You can set filters and select views from the views display. This can be a handy way of locating views you might have difficulty locating otherwise. A key feature of main view is the ability to issue view names as commands to fast path to a given display. It's a good idea to make note of view names as you use main view. More experienced main view users will tend to use view names as commands to quickly locate specific views. Here's another quiz. This slide presents a list of some of the more common main view commands. A complete list of commands is available in the main view help displays and the main view users guide. The time command is used to view historical data. We'll cover this more in detail later. 
the Views command lists all the available views for the current main view monitor. The HS and VS commands cause the screen to be split either horizontally or vertically at the cursor position. The context command is primarily used to control which targets, systems, subsystems, etc., you wish to provide data to the display. You will use the context command to change the targets being monitored regularly. The cust command is used to invoke the view customization dialog. I have an example of using the view customization dialog later in this session. Some additional commands you'll likely use. The close command closes the current window. Max maximizes the current window to fill the entire screen. The rest commands return the windows to the original sizing following a max command. The set command produces a window where you can change the context, product, and or view in the current window. The make alarm command invokes the main view alarm manager dialog to generate alarms. Alarms monitor metrics against defined thresholds and raise an exception when the threshold is reached. There are many other main view commands. Some we will introduce as we progress through these materials and others we will revisit. For a full list of available commands, refer to the main view online help displays or the main view user's guide. You can use the sort command to perform ad hoc sorting of the view records. To use the sort command, type sort on the command line and position your cursor in the field you wish to sort by, then press Enter. If a view is redisplayed with new data, sort will reset. To permanently change the sort sequence of the view data, it's necessary to invoke the view customization dialog. While there isn't an example of using the sort customization option in this session, we'll have some examples of the view customization dialog so you'll get a sense of how it behaves. The include mask command displays filter mask fields in the column header to filter data quickly and easily. Type inc mask on the command line to open the second heading line for filter arguments. Specify one or more arguments in the command headers, such as greater than 50 or equals st star. Specifying all at the end of the ink mask command will cause the filter mask to persist across all the views in your main view session that support filter masks. The locate command can be used to search the view data for a specific string. When the string is located, the view is positioned with that row first in the view. Locate string arguments can be masked using the star wildcard and plus or question mark for individual characters. You can also use the ISPF rfind command to repeat the locate operation to find the next occurrence of the string. MainView contains extensive help facilities in both the 3270 and Explorer type user sessions. Accessing MainView user information this way is often more convenient and faster than referencing the MainView documentation. Help is available at several levels. If you PF1 on the command line, you will get the general help, such as commands and concepts. If you PF1 on the view name, main view will display a summary of the view and its purpose. And if you PF1 in a field or column, you'll get information about that specific metric. The main view help facility is context sensitive and contains embedded links to subtopics. If you drill down many windows and wish to close them all, type Q and then press Enter. In some instances, field calculations or tuning tips are available. Hyperlinks are point-and-shoot constructs in the main view architecture. The idea is you put the cursor on a value in a view and press Enter to navigate to additional detail regarding the value you linked from. Hyperlinks can be context sensitive. They can be different for different values. Hyperlinks can transfer between main view monitors. Fields with hyperlinks have highlighted field headings, white by default in the 3270, teal in the Explorer. Hyperlinks can be added to columns 
or existing hyperlinks can be modified. This is accomplished via the View Customization dialog and is treated as an advanced topic. Time for another quick quiz. The Time command controls access to general history data in Main View windows. Issuing the Time command with no operands will display a window with labeled fields where you can enter in the time request. It's often desirable to move forward or backward one interval of data at a time. This is easily accomplished by using the time equal equal next and time equal equal prev commands. It's suggested to assign PF5 and PF6 to time equal equal next and time equal equal prev. Be aware that Kix transactions and DB2 threads use a different history structure specific to those solutions. For new main view users, it's often easier to simply issue the time command with no operands. This will present a pop-up window where you can specify your time parameters in the labeled fields. If we enter time on the command line and press enter, main view will present us with a window where we can specify what time frame we want our data. The star can be used to indicate the current system value. Using an equal sign indicates the current window value. The duration of the data can be stored in intervals, minutes, hours, days, or even weeks if you wish to keep that much data. There's also time of day and day of the week masks to help filter the data. Once you've provided the input values, press PF3 and the window will be updated with the data from the time you requested. Note that the date time fields on the window information line are now different than the system date time in the upper left. You may also notice that the window status on the window information line has changed from a W to H for history. Since the time context is assigned to a window and not a screen, it is readily possible to display different time frames within a screen. This can be desirable to compare the status of the environment at different times, such as comparing data from yesterday during the same time frame. In this display, we have three windows opened, and each has a different time frame. Window 1 shows two hours of data ending at 1400. Window 2 shows data in real time. And Window 3 shows one hour of data ending at 1030. The DS List view and DS List S and DS List L for some main view solutions displays the history data sets and what time range of data is available to use in the main view session. Okay, one more quiz. And that concludes this session on Main View Basics Part 1. For more videos on Main View and other BMC solutions, please visit our BMC Mainframe YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash BMC Software Mainframe slash featured. That's it for this session. Thank you, and see you next time.